is a recording of this year's virtual residency fair. We'd like to take the time to thank the programs that volunteered their time to present to this year's applicants. This year's PMNR Scholars Virtual Residency Fair is supported by PMNR Recap and Ultrasound Guidance. PMNR Recap is the leading resource for your physiatry board preparation, clinical preparation, audition rotations, and beyond. PMNR Recap offers 35 hours of review videos, hundreds of review questions, and oral board cases to help you become the best physiatrist that you can be. Head to pmnrrecap.com to learn more. Ultrasound Guidance is the innovative new on online ultrasound learning platform that gives you instant access to expert instruction. With rapid scans and complete scans of every joint and peripheral nerve, Ultrasound Guidance is the perfect way to jumpstart your MSK ultrasound learning. Visit ultrasoundguidance.com to learn more. Awesome. Great. Well, welcome to University of New Mexico's PM&R program. Um, the three of us are uh, our new chiefs over here. Um, uh, my name is Stephen Sen. I'm one of the PGY4s. Uh, I did my medical school over in Florida and moved out here in 2020. Uh, I'm Tanner Shaw. I'm also a fourth year. Originally, uh, I'm from Utah, but I did medical school in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. Hi, my name is Lana Ko. I'm also one of the fourth years. I did my medical school training in uh, New York, uh, New York City, and I uh, moved to New Mexico for residency. Welcome, everybody. Awesome. So we're going to try to blast through this so we can save some good time for questions after. Um, but just to kind of uh, give us a little bit more of an intro, here's a lot of the res uh, residents that you can see at our program. Uh, we're a categorical program, so you can start with PGY1 here all the way through four. Um, and these are just the pictures of, of our different classes all kind of hanging out. And bottom right corner, you got uh, Dr. Dutton, who's our program director, holding that awesome cake. Um, and we also got Diana, who's um, our program coordinator, kind of keeping us all together. A um, little bit of background about our program. Um, so uh, we started with five per year, and that's kind of how we are for our class of PGY4s. But um, starting this year, the current PGY1s are seven per year. So as you guys are applying and interviewing, know that there's seven spots moving forward. Um, we have primarily four training spots here in Albuquerque. Uh, one of them is called Loveless UNM Rehab Hospital. That's our uh, inpatient standalone rehab hospital about 62 beds, which I can get to more details later. Uh, we also have our uh, University of New Mexico uh, hospital system, which is kind of our academic hospital system. And then Raymond G. Murphy is our uh, VA hospital out here. It's one of our um, uh, 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 primary SCI kind of designated sites. And then last but not least is our Terry Tingley Children's Hospital, our only uh, full service uh, children's hospital for rehab in the whole state of New Mexico. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about each one of those sites. The first one being uh, University of New Mexico is kind of our big academic center. It's our only uh, level one trauma center uh, in the state of New Mexico. So people kind of fly in from like hundreds of miles away. Uh, we've got uh, all kinds of different kinds of uh, acuity and disease states, um, all the different kind of zebras that you read about in your textbooks, you're probably going to see out here. Um, you do a lot of your internal medicine uh, PGY1 out here. Um, our PGY1 is predominantly with the internal medicine department. Uh, and we mix in some PM&R with that as well. And then as you advance through PGY2, 3, and 4, you end up doing more like sports medicine, uh, consults, uh, spine, pain, neuromuscular medicine, all at the University of New Mexico. Um, in addition to that, there's also some good construction going on. There's a huge expansion coming out that should be finishing it towards the end of 2024. Um, 20, uh, sorry, 96 new inpatient beds, another 18 more uh, operating rooms, and then a colossal like 1,400 plus parking spots. So it's all pretty exciting stuff. Let's see if it'll advance. There it goes. Um, University of New Mexico, uh, the Lobos were a division one uh, uh, college sports uh, coverage opportunities here. Um, so if you're interested in sports medicine and sports coverage or event coverage, or just want to have the exposure, um, the visual and athletics here is uh, they're just tons of activities to choose from for event coverage. And I think one of my favorite things about this program is that we actually have uh, a sports medicine clinic that is in that football stadium that you're looking at right there. Uh, we're, we have a clinic in the training room. You have D1 athletes surrounding uh, you at all times and they pop in and you get a lot of really uh, high level exposure to elite athletes. Uh, so that, I, I definitely think that's one of the things that sets us apart. Absolutely. 
<laughs> Sorry. Oh man, I took a wrong sip of my drink. So next one is we have Raymond G. Murphy, our VA hospital. Um, it's one of our, uh, so in the US you have uh, 24, I think actually now I think we're up to 25 um, SCI uh, designated sites. Um, so we're one of those sites across the US um, operating on the hub and spoke model where um, a lot of these complex SCI cases can come here. And then we can also offer a lot of, um, how to say support to surrounding hospitals in the, in the region as well. Of course, as part of SCI, um, you do a lot of uh, wound care and then, um, and then within the VA system, we also have a lot of uh, clinics dedicated towards preventing amputations as well as supporting people who have gone through it uh, for various reasons. So uh, you get to learn a lot about prosthetics and orthotics there as well. Um, next one up is um, our Loveless UNM Rehab Hospital. Um, what's fun about this is the standalone rehab hospital. It's a collaboration uh, between uh, Loveless, which is community hospital and the UNM, which is the academic side. Um, and then within it, we also have a private practice uh, physiatry group too. So, it's really fun to work here in that you get exposure to private practice, academic and community all in the same little vicinity. Uh, there's inpatient and outpatient uh, therapies going on at all times uh, in this building too. And then uh, uh, this slide there, us from our class when we first started. Woo, that's <laughs> us. <laughs> um, so with that, I think, oh, well, that's fair. We should talk about that too. Uh, our conference credited for brain injury, spinal cord injury and stroke. Um, Terry Tingley's Children's Hospital, um, our only full service children's hospital uh, for rehab in the state of New Mexico. Uh, and uh, we actually had it separated into uh, an outpatient division and an inpatient division. Uh, super fun because when you're on that rotation as a resident, um, you get to do pretty much anything that's peds rehab related, as far as I know. Uh, like we have, we even, our peds ortho department even like flies out to like remote cities in New Mexico and you can join them if you want. And, um, that's a lot of fun. You can join our prosthetics and orthotics group and they're building these really custom molded uh, sockets and these really beautiful orthotics that are custom molded as well. And um, it's a really fun experience all around. All right, and with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Dr. Ko. Okay, all right. So let's go over the structure of our uh, clinical rotations. We have 10 five-week blocks per year. Inpatient rotations are scheduled over two consecutive blocks, which means you stay on uh, for 10 weeks. You have, um, you have 17 months of inpatient, two months of inpatient consult, and 16 months of outpatient experience spread out over the three years uh, of your residency training. And you also have two blocks of elective rotations uh, in the PGY3 and PGY4 years. You can choose to do whatever you are interested in uh, for your elective. People have done prosthetics and orthotics, women's health, integrative medicine, ultrasound, and radiology. So electives are very flexible. Uh, and we have home call system, and residents um, have to take call only when they're on inpatient rotation at Loveless and Rehab Hospital. And this is an example schedule. Uh, yellows are... Um, Outpatient and grades are mostly inpatient rotations and consults, with the exception of pediatrics, which is a combination of outpatient and inpatient. So you can see that you have the most inpatient experience, experience in your PGY2 year, which means uh, the calls are also front-loaded, uh, with most calls uh, taken during the PGY2 year. And as you, can, uh, as you get to the third and fourth years, it becomes more and more outpatient. But you also have some outpatient experience um, uh, in your PGY2 year, uh, in, including the MSK and pain, where you get to do some spine injections and ultrasound, ultrasound guided injections and EMGs and general PMNR, including TBI and SCI. Um, as for didactics, um, so three to four hours on Thursday mornings are dedicated to resident learning. Uh, and it is a protective time where residents are free of any clinical duties. Uh, the didactic se sessions are divided to educational blocks, uh, which repeat every 18 months, except for orientation, uh, which happens in the beginning of each academic year, and anatomy, which also recurs annually. And these are um, highlights of all the educational blocks we have. And I'll talk uh, a little bit more about our QI and research uh, longitudinal curriculum in the next couple of slides. Now a little more about our didactics. We've got Grand Round, which is held every first Thursday. 
Here we have residents uh, presents a uh, kind of a cutting edge medicine in the field of rehab and journal club occurs uh, about every three months or so and annually uh, PGY uh, fours pick and present um, articles related to various rehab topics. We also have quality improvement and patient safety uh, conference or quits, which used to be called MNMs, uh, where we go over basically patient cases that could have gone differently. Uh, we do this quips conference about two, uh, uh, every two to three months um, as well. And of course, you also have rotation specific didactics um, on your uh, rotations. Um, so for scholarly activity, also all residents are required to do at least one research project and one quality improvement uh, project before graduation. Uh, longitudinal QI curriculum is led by our program director, Dr. Dutton, uh, and she does an excellent job at like walking you through the project step by step and little by little. Uh, so she takes it from like something that's like super intimidating, um, the, the, you know, sounds intimidating, um, but you know, but makes it very attainable and changeable. Um, and, and she helps you throughout the process. And a, and a large number of our residents actually have presented their research and QI projects at uh, the AAPMR and AAP meetings, uh, in addition to our annual research symposium and QI symposium within our uh, residency program as a PGY4. Yeah, research day and QI symposium. And as for ex uh, extracurricular activities, um, we are very busy um, outside of our residency program. We have monthly ultrasound club. Um, our program has three butterfly probes uh, that residents can self check out. Some of the residents get together um, every third Tuesday, pick a major joint and practice scanning on each other. We also have high school uh, football sideline coverage opportunities. Uh, as well as annual pre-participation physical outreach event, uh, which consists of physical exam workshop for medical students, um, uh, a week before the actual PPE event where residents and med students kind of work as a team, uh, as well as uh, our uh, sports medicine fellow to provide free sports physical uh, uh, for those underserved student athletes at a local high school. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the mentorship that you get while you're here at uh, UNM uh, PMNR. Uh, one of the things that I really love is that we assign, even as a PGY-1, while you're doing your internal medicine intern year, you're assigned to a team of residents. And so we have uh, divided up among uh, each of the different class years with the seniors being in charge of it. And uh, you work together as mentors. Um, and help the ju more junior residents as they go through, uh, you know, their intern year and adjusting into a PMNR life as well. Uh, I actually am inviting, my whole team is coming over this month. We're coming over to my family's house and we're all having dinner. Uh, and we really try and build up relationships outside of uh, just being in a workroom together uh, to really try and help mentor each other. Uh, outside of uh, mentoring from other residents, we also have opportunities for mentor uh, mentoring from uh, faculty as well. Uh, each person is assigned a faculty mentor and you meet with them uh, twice a year and you kind of go over how things are going in the program, any concerns you have. Uh, you talk about your research and your QI projects, uh, career goals, and they will help facilitate getting in contact with anybody uh, to help further you along in your career. And it's a really valuable opportunity to to get to work with uh, your attendings one-on-one -on -one and as they focus on helping you become a better physiatrist. Um, and we also have our uh, program director and associate program director who have open office hours um, here in the resident room where the door is open and you can go in any of those times and just chat about anything you have concerns about, uh, bring up any uh, questions and they can definitely help you out. Uh, definitely one of the, the strong suits of our program here. Uh, I get to talk about a lot of the fun stuff. So this is a QR code. Uh, we don't have enough time to go over all of the wellness that we get here in Albuquerque, uh, but this is a little bit of a flyer that we had a, a former resident put together kind of going over. So I'd encourage you guys, uh, screenshot this, take a picture with your phone, pull it up, uh, peruse it later, uh, because it has a lot of really valuable stuff talking about what life like is here in Albuquerque. Um, 
I, I firmly believe that uh, every training program here in, in the United States will train you to become a good physiatrist. Um, but what you need to do as you move forward with finding programs you're interested in is finding out what the culture is like, what the community is like, and seeing if that's a good fit for you. So I wanted to present a little bit of what life is like here in Albuquerque. Everybody has seen Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, and uh, I think they have a skewed view of what life in Albuquerque is like. So we, we wanted to go over a little bit here. Uh, this first one is uh, winter in New Mexico. Uh, New Mexico has eight ski resorts that are world class. I grew up in Utah skiing, and the skiing here is absolutely amazing. Uh, we have great places just a few minutes from the residency room, and uh, the residents on good snow days are always hopping on their cameras to go see what the conditions look like. Uh, we also have uh, wonderful uh, cross-country skiing and snowshoeing, snowshoeing opportunities just 30 minutes from the resident room. So uh, even after work, you can run up into the mountains and go find some fun up there. Uh, we also have uh, amazing sports here in, in New Mexico. We have a minor league baseball uh, team called the, the Isotopes. Uh, they're a subsidiary of the Rockies. Uh, we also have the Ice Wolves, which are uh, from the Avalanche uh, in hockey. And we also have uh, New Mexico United, which is a, an MLS soccer team. Uh, down there on the bottom right corner, you'll see this past year, all of the residents got together and we had a sand volleyball team uh, that we competed in. And we took, uh, oh man, we dominated in the season, but we got knocked out early in the tournament. Uh, so we're, we're hungry for, uh, for a comeback this year. Five uh, minutes remaining. Um, on the left here, you'll see what a lot of people picture New Mexico looks like. And there is a lot of New Mexico that absolutely has beautiful red rock, uh, sagebrush, dirt, beautiful uh, outdoors. But uh, New Mexico also has a lot of high mountain peaks. Uh, so all of these pictures were taken by residents throughout this entire presentation. And they go over what life is like here in New Mexico. So you can get uh, just 40 minutes from the resident room, uh, that picture in the middle on the bottom uh, is just, it's called the 10K trail hike. And it's just absolutely beautiful. So there are mountains up here. And uh, last of all, the lifestyle and culture. Uh, I am so glad that I ended up here in New Mexico. The culture of uh, medicine here is that uh, you will get a top-notch medical education, but all of the attendings and all of the programs care about who you are as a person. And they want you to become an amazing physiatrist, and also to make sure that you can be a person outside of medicine. Because if your only personality trait is being a doctor, then you're failed as a person. And physiatry is definitely built around that. Um, so just in this final slide, we have just uh, our contact information. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please reach out to us and we'd be more than glad to answer any questions you guys have. Uh, no, we'll open it up now for questions. And please check out our Instagram, UNMPMR. Oh, yes. There's so much better content there uh, than we can put on this uh, slide. So go check it out. <laughs> what questions do you guys have? Are there opportunities for residents to work with indigenous Pueblo populations in the region? How strong does your program value geographic preference or ties to the uh, region? Uh, so like Stephen was talking about, uh, you have a lot of opportunities. We have a lot of satellite clinics uh, and the ortho department, uh, when you're on your pediatric rotation, they have a private plane and they fly you and other providers out to these rural areas where you get to interact with a lot of underserved population. Uh, being the only trauma uh, trauma center, level one trauma center in, in New Mexico as well, uh, we get quite a few uh, people coming in from uh, different uh, Pueblos and a lot of transfers from some of the more rural areas. So you get a lot of opportunity to work with uh, indigenous population here. Um, and I, you know, I'm not sure about the geographic, uh, the, the preference uh, but definitely we're looking for people to, to come to New Mexico, fall in love with it like I did, and to, uh, to stay here. I think all programs are looking for that. And then uh, about the question about any opportunities for medical students to join didactics or join, join a journal club virtually. Yes, medical students rotating with us are always welcome to come and join us at didactics. Uh, last week, actually, we, 
uh, the residents and medical students, the rotating medical students actually went to uh, do some hands-on Botox injections um, uh, over at UNM. So they are part of our learning. Um, they're always with us. And as far as leadership opportunities, sorry, we're going through the chat. <laughs> um, but as far as leadership opportunities, um, I, I serve as the uh, chairperson of the resident and fellow council for all of the residency programs here in New Mexico. Um, I'm also on the graduate medical education committee uh, at the University of New Mexico here. Um, so we have a lot of opportunities locally, but we also, I served as uh, an ambassador for the FIT program, uh, so physiatrist in training. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities here for uh, leadership, uh, for residents to have leadership. One minute remaining. Any other questions? Again, one last uh, shameless plug for our UNM PM&R. Uh, definitely take a look and see what life is like here in New Mexico. Uh, we have a wonderful place to, for you to get training, but also a great place for you to grow into a better person. So uh, definitely feel free to reach out to us uh, with any questions. Uh, we also have a lot of our residents uh, here in the chat. Uh, definitely reach out to any of us and we'd be glad to answer any questions you guys have. All right, thank you everybody. Thank you. Thank you to the University of New Mexico. Um, thank you for being here this evening and for your awesome presentation. If you want to uh, stay on a couple minutes and answer any questions that come in up in the chat, you are welcome to do so as Honor Health uh, takes over uh, the screen sharing. <laughs>